Hey everybody, it's Nate and Steph from Adventure in a Backpack. Welcome to our YouTube channel. We are all about adventure travel. We travel full time in our DIY camper van having as many adventures as we can. If this sounds like your kind of channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Today we are going to be talking about two wheel drive versus four wheel drive camper van. So let's get started. Ninety-five percent of the time we are in places just like this in the middle of nowhere. We're on BLM land, we're in national forest, whatever the case may be. Typically we had to drive down dirt roads, gravel roads of varying conditions to get here. And people ask us all the time, is your van two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? And you would think the answer would be that it's a four-wheel drive based on where we are often, but it's not. It's two-wheel drive. And so today we're going to talk about why we chose two-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive what the capabilities are of it, and how it's been performing for us so far. Now, I do wanna preface this with, we are not anti four wheel drive. We do have a two wheel drive vehicle, but we are not anti four wheel drive. There is a time and a place for four wheel drive, it, and four wheel drive is a great tool, but it's not a crutch. So we're gonna talk about why we have a two wheel drive vehicle. Choosing our two wheel drive Sprinter really came down to two major reasons. The first reason was that brand new four wheel drive sprinters were on back order when we started our build. And so we couldn't have even gotten one if we wanted. Sprinters only started being made in four wheel drive within the last couple of years. And by the time that we started our build, they weren't available. They were all on back order. There were no used ones available. So availability was the number one consideration for us. They just weren't available. The number two consideration is a huge consideration money. The brand new four wheel drive sprinters were close to around 60 grand. Um, and that just wasn't in our budget. So even if they had been available when we started our, our build, we couldn't afford it. Now, that being said, we also could have converted our two wheel drive. That's an option converting the two wheel drive to a four wheel drive. But that is also super expensive. That comes down to about twenty to $25,000. And dropping that kind of money on a 10 year old vehicle just really didn't seem worth it for us. And then we also wanted to consider, do we need four wheel drive? And so that was a major consideration as well. Which that leads to the question, do we feel limited by only having two wheel drive? And the answer is not, not really. We're able to reach some really, really fantastic areas way out in the middle of nowhere by just a dirt road that's of varying condition. Um, whenever the road gets pretty rough, whenever it gets close to needing four wheel drive perhaps, it really, really shakes the van back and forth. It pitches side to side. All sprinters are relatively top heavy. They're not, there's no low center of gravity on these things. And so they really shake back and forth. So the fact that we've got pots and pans and dishes and camera gear and all this kind of stuff in the van and we've got cabinets and drawers. Everything shakes around so much whenever we get on super rough roads. And which if we had a, if we came up to a road that we needed four wheel drive on, it would really be putting some serious wear and tear on the cabinets and everything that we put into the build out. And since we've been in winter conditions for the last few months, another question that we get a lot is how does the Sprinter do in winter conditions? And to be perfectly honest, it does great. We have been from Denver to British Columbia, all the way down through the Sierras, and we've had no problems with it. Um, we do have, we are fully loaded down, so we're pretty heavy, and we have snow rated tires. So those two factors make a big difference versus if you had a, an empty cargo van and just regular highway tires. So those two differences do make a big difference. Um, but the entire time we have been in winter conditions on snowy roads and all of that, the Sprinter has done just fine and we haven't had to put on our snow chains a single time. So whether you have a two wheel drive van or a four wheel drive van, ultimately it boils down to one thing and that is knowing your vehicle's capabilities. We know that we have a two wheel drive vehicle and we know pretty close to what the capabilities are. If you have a four wheel drive van, you're gonna have a few more capabilities, but you still need to know what those capabilities are. If you have an expedition kitted out Land Rover, 
you're going to have far fewer limitations, but you're still going to have limitations. Every form of overland travel has limitations, and you need to know those. So even though knowing your capabilities is incredibly important, having four-wheel drive versus knowing how to use four-wheel drive are two totally different things. We have spent a lot of time traveling off-road, not necessarily in just this van, even in the four-wheel drive trucks that we've had before this. And knowing what I know from that training, we can likely get more places in our two-wheel drive van than a lot of people can get in their four-wheel drive vans if they don't have any kind of off-road experience. So with that off-road training and experience, it comes a few different things. So knowing your line that you're gonna take through a tricky, se tricky section, uh, having somebody awesome to get out and spot me through a section that is a little bit trickier. Uh, what else do we have? <laughs> knowing when to bail. Um, knowing when your line was a bad line and knowing when to back out of it and having the driving skill to be able to back out of a section that might be a little sketchy. And those are really just a few of the super, super basic fundamental skills of off-road driving. Sometimes four-wheel drive will actually give somebody a super false sense of security. We have seen time and time again where people think that just because they have a four-wheel drive van, they can just go wherever they want and do whatever they want. And that is just not the case, not the case by any means. Uh, a few months ago, we were on one of the Facebook groups and this guy had gotten into, um, I can't remember if it was a mud puddle or I think it was honestly like, just like kind of a muddy, like boggy yard. And he was already stuck. He was in two wheel drive when he got stuck. And then he thought his van was broken because he was trying to go from two wheel drive, shift the transfer case into four wheel drive and it wasn't shifting. He was already stuck. And he was thinking that his sprint, sprinter was a piece of crap and that it was broken and it wasn't working and all this kind of stuff. And guys, that's not how that works. If you are already stuck and you're still in two wheel drive trying to get into four wheel drive, it's a 50-50 shot of if it's gonna shift over because your tires have to be moving a little bit before it makes that shift from two to four. So it's a super false, it can be a super false sense of security if you're just totally relying on it just to get you out of these problems. So it all boils down to knowing your capabilities, knowing your likelihood of getting stuck, and then being able to get yourself out of those sticky situ situations. It is really, really irresponsible to do any kind of off-road traveling without carrying some form of recovery gear. We carry recovery gear and we have put together a kit that we think is probably the bare minimum of what anybody who plans on traveling off-road should carry. So let's go check out what we carry. The first and most important thing in any recovery kit is a shovel. This is my go-to whenever we're trying to get out of a bad situation because you need to clear out the debris from where, whatever you're stuck on. Whether you're stuck in the mud, sand, rocks, dirt, whatever the case may be, snow, you need to clear out the, the, the debris from around the tires, around the axle if you've gotten that stuck. And that's really the first step. And honestly, most of the time in two wheel drive, you can get out of most situations just by clearing out the debris on whatever it is that you're stuck on. This shovel that we've got is a Demos shovel. It's a collapsible shovel that's actually full size. It's super, super thick, powder coated aluminum that is incredibly sturdy. And it it's a full size shovel that collapses down to fit right in the back of our kit without taking up as much room as a full size or even a half size D-ring shovel. So the second most important piece of recovery gear that we have specifically for winter conditions is a bucket of sand. So having sand specifically for winter conditions is super important just to give you that extra bit of traction if you get into a spot that's icy um, or slick because of snow, packed snow, ice, anything like that, especially if you're on something that's steep. Having that extra little bit of traction really makes a difference. 
The next super important thing are these floor mats. So these are literally just little scrubby floor mats that you can get from Ace Hardware or the link in the description below. And these are fantastic for if you're just barely stuck. If you're in like an icy parking lot and you've dug yourself a little bit of a little divot and you just can't get out of it, sand isn't doing the trick or you don't want to carry around a full bucket of sand. We actually have these on all of our doors in our Sprinter. It's easy to put it down just right in front of the tires and they really, really grab onto snow and ice specifically and the big benefit with them is they're super inexpensive and they're dual purpose so we keep them in our um, in our van anyway and they're they're really inexpensive rather than having the big expensive traction boards these are from expo there's a few different types out there there's expo there's max tracks but these were the most bang for your buck uh, as far as we're concerned we haven't had to use them yet, but we have seen many, many people use them for very, very good things to get them out of the snow. Basically, it's pretty straightforward as far as putting these underneath the front of your tires and you just drive up on top of them. Uh, if you're on sand, this will disperse out the weight of the tire onto the sand, the snow. If you've dug into some mud, these grips right here on the end are going to really grab onto your tire and get you to crawl up on these super aggressive lugs that are on top of the boards. So these are another thing that we have added to our kit that we also feel super beneficial. Next up is toe points. We have these fantastic heavy duty shackles that attach to our front bumper as well as one receiver shackle that attaches to our rear bumper. And so these are for really good toe points if we get ourselves so stuck that we cannot self recover. Now I will make the disclaimer that these attach into our bumpers and our bumpers are off heavy duty off road bumpers um, that are mounted directly into the frame. If you do not have those, don't attach your toe points or shackles to your bumper. You need to really look at your bumper and, and look at under your vehicle for the proper toe points because if you attach a toe point to a standard plastic bumper, that is a fantastic way to go viral on Facebook with your bumper getting pulled straight off. So don't be that guy. Next on the list are snatch straps and toe straps. Two different things, kind of sort of the same purpose. This one is a toe strap that's gonna be fairly inexpensive, probably 20 something bucks. Uh, just your uh, just O'Reilly's or something like that. This one does not stretch at all. It's for just tow general towing like pulling out of uh, Yeah, just just general towing. This is more utility. This is a snatch strap. This one's by ARB It's an ARB snatch strap, which means that it's basically a dynamic toe strap Which means that it has a little bit of stretch to it So kind of how that works is the person who is doing the towing is going to get a little bit of a head start and going to kind of yank the person out of the back but since this stretches it's going to gently yank think about if you're pulling something with a bungee cord you don't have that sudden like really aggressive like at the end of a rope kind of like jarring sensation it's not necessarily nice and easy but it's a lot less abrasive than a toe strap or a chain don't use chains and last but certainly not least, especially in winter conditions, is snow chains. So basically a snow chain just goes around your tire and turns your regular tire into a super aggressive tire. Um, these, are, these are really, really useful for winter snowy conditions when you're on icy snow packed roads um, and it's really slick. It's also um, some passes in the mountains require snow chains or snow tires. So if you don't have snow tires, this is a good option to be able to put chains on your tires, on your existing tires, and turn them into a very aggressive tire. They also can be used in muddy slick situations for the similar reason. They can turn a regular tire, your regular all-terrain tire, into a really aggressive mud tire. So if you plan on doing any kind of off-road travel, these are the items that we consider the absolute bare minimum that you should be carrying. We really hope this video helped you out and hope it cleared up any kind of confusion between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive and helping you to make your own decision. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment below. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Hey. Wait, before we go, we realized we didn't talk about something. We, I know that we're going to get questions about like, well, what about a winch? Well, what about a high lift jack? 
Look guys, there's an entire industry built on recovery gear and a winch and a high lift jack probably would be the next two things I would add to the list. But both of those items can be super, super dangerous to somebody who is not very well versed in traveling off road. That's why we didn't put them on this list in particular. If you get a winch and a high lift jack, you definitely need to have some extra training rather than just shoving a traction board under a tire and shoveling out mud from around, uh, from, from, from around your vehicle. So that's why we didn't include them in this particular list, but still good pieces of gear. So this list is more for beginners. So, for real this time. Until next time, we'll see you later. Hi. Good job. Thanks. Fan damned. Go away. No. Okay, be fine. No, it's not. It's back. Go. We're going to talk about something to do with all of that. We're going to talk about why we have a two-wheel drive vehicle. Pyrus, go. Um, so it all, <laughs> there was a bee that just flew wow. past <laughs> Buzz the tower. So it's a bucket of sand. It's a bucket of sand. Oh. Are you okay? Yeah. We really hope this video helped you out. We hope to cope.